Phantom is here. I have received uh, endless requests to unbox and uh, do a first look video, first impressions video of this case. It is NZXT's most, probably most anticipated case ever. So the first thing we're gonna do is break the seals. Now this is an evaluation unit, so it's not quite the fit and finish of the product that's actually going to be available on retail shelves. So like, it's mostly done, but there's a couple little things, like you might find the side panel doesn't fit quite right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so the tooling is not quite there yet. But let's take a quick look at the outside of the box before we actually open it. I know everyone's very excited to see this thing. Here we go. So we have external five and quarter inch bays, five. We have seven internal three and a half inch bays. And then we have a standard ATX seven expansion slots. On the top we have a 140 millimeter spot. On the top, oh sorry, in the front we have a 140 millimeter spot. In the top we have two by 200 millimeter with one included. In the rear we have one 120 millimeter included. And on the side we have one 200 or 230 millimeter and two 120 millimeters, and those are included. Okay, clearance, we can accept up to uh, 35 centimeter long video cards, so that's quite long. That's like, what, 13 and a half inches or something like that? Anything out there, basically. CPU support is uh, 180 millimeters, assuming you're not using the side fan, and that pretty much takes care of everything here. It's available in red, black, and white, but black and white are the only colors that are gonna be available right off the bat. In terms of the other features, Ample room for wire management, that's one of the things that's got people really talking about this case, as well as the EATX support. It has a nice roomy interior, so you can actually see it right here. It looks kind of like Stormtrooper armor, actually. It's a pretty, pretty cool color scheme with mostly white and then black accents. Very neat. It also includes, okay, you got the seven cooling fans with the option of up to three large 200 mil fans. And this is cool because this really ties into how they've got the 200 millimeter fan holes in the case. You can support up to five 20 watt channel uh, fans on the controller. You have a fan controller that supports up to 20 watt fans per channel. So that's very, very cool because it means you can support big fans, fans that move a lot of air, and uh, you can actually do it with the fan controller that's built right into the case. Here's uh, pictures of the two other colors. So the one we have here today I believe is white. Uh, seven hard drive screwless rails with SSD support and screwless five and a quarter inch design. So mostly toolless, but we'll have a look at the case itself very shortly here and we'll, uh, we'll definitely talk in more detail about all the innovations found within. Packaging is really good. This is so important because unless you're buying the case at a retail store, which I hope you're not because you should be buying it at NCIX, uh, it's important that the case actually survives its trip to you. So NZXT has ample foam packaging built in around the case. You can see they've got it molded to the shape of the top of the case itself here. It looks really, really good. This is a nice sturdy closed cell foam. Very, very important for ensuring that your case is going to arrive in one piece. Same thing for the bottom, very nice, all custom fitted. You'd be surprised how few cases come adequately packed because while it may be enough for the case to ship on its own, what if you ever have to ship a full system built in the case? It becomes quite a bit heavier. All right, so let's take the protective plastic off. And that is very, very nice. Look at that. Cameraman, uh, come get this angle over here, right here. I'm pointing with my finger where the cameraman needs to go. Oh, it blocks the light if you stay. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. Here, I'll adjust it for you. So, uh, there we go. So that is just a bright white. You know what? Compared to the photos, it really does look way more like Stormtrooper armor here than it does, uh, than it does in, the, uh, in the pictures. So here's our five, five and a quarter inch bays. You've got these cool little uh, tabs. So cameraman, can you zoom in so you can have a look at how these tabs work? You just press the, press the little button right there and it opens it right up. So you don't have any, uh, any stupid metal blocking things once you've taken these off. That's it, that's the whole procedure. Now the case is made of plastic, but it's a very, very heavy plastic and it feels very solid. So you look at like th little things, okay? Like the inside of the front door, you've got uh, like a, a matte 
plastic cover on the inside of the plastic outer piece so you've got these layers that's what gives it a rigidity that you wouldn't normally expect from a plastic case the hinge has also got uh, large pegs so they're not going to just uh, come out okay the door closes very very tidily so the the fit and finish even though this is a pre-production sample as I mentioned before is perfect on the front door uh, the only reason there's fingerprints all over it are from me touching it here but they wipe off quite easily uh, another thing that we should probably talk about actually is fingerprint resistance of a finish like this because it is quite shiny the white color is really good for hiding it you can actually see that already here on the camera because I'm putting my hands all over it and we are not running Sorry about that, my camera battery ran out. So, okay, fingerprint resistance looks to be very, very good, at least on the white color. Let's start having a look at some of the features. So right here, we've got our fan controllers. So this is uh, conveniently coated. Now, I, I don't know what they all mean, but I'm gonna guess that this one with the two big holes in it is maybe the two big ones on the top. I mean, you can play around with it and figure out what they all are, but there you are. That's where all of that is connected. Then on the other side, we've got our power reset uh, we've got our LED indicators we have an eSATA two USB 2.0 a mic port as well as a headphone port all right so that's pretty straightforward and let's start let's have a look at the side panels because I think that's actually pretty no wait we're not quite done with the front okay cameraman if you want to come down here and have a look that's where your 140 millimeter fan mount is through that mesh right there so you can see these meshes even though the uh, from a bit of a distance they're they're very uh, they're a very solid black, so they give you kind of a, a nice patterned appearance to the whole case. They're very free flowing, so if you get close, you can see through it quite well, and that means that you're going to get lots of airflow traveling through them, which is very very good, of course. Okay, so let's move on to the side. Let's start with this side, just arbitrarily, this side. So this side has uh, mesh holes here. So you can see through to the hard drive cages there. You can see the back of the motherboard plate there. And uh, we'll find out what those holes are, although I'll assume that they're for power supply cable management. And uh, we've got a thumb screw back here, so why don't I go ahead and uh, show you that. So the back is held on by optionally up to three thumb screws, but it just comes with one, which is fine, because really unless you're trying to, uh, I don't know, keep a you know cat or something out of your case, you don't need to worry about too many screws holding on the side panel. So there's the side panel itself. In terms of the finish, you can see it's uh, just a white paint. So this part's metal, obviously. So you can see the inside there, okay? But the white paint finish on the metal actually matches the white plastic finish on the plastic perfectly. So you don't have to worry about like a, a contrast in between those. Okay, so that side panel, you know what? We'll have a closer look at that after. Let's have a look at the back. We've got a 120 mil fan here, standard ATX layout here, and room for a standard ATX power supply here. So that's all pretty straightforward. We have up to four water cooling tubing grommets uh, all along the back of the case. And let's go ahead and look at the other side panel before we take it open, uh, take it apart and look at the inside. So here we've got our huge 200 or 230 millimeter fan mount. And then we have two, I believe those are 140s, Help me out here on the side. Two 120s. Ah, you know what? I bet that's what that code is for. The two two circles next to each other. Oh well, that's okay. All right, so we'll take off our other. Wow, these are long thumb screws. Check this out. Can you see that? Like huge thumb screws. Okay, let's take that off. So the side panel comes off like that there we go like I said fit and finish might not be quite right because this is not uh, not a retail case so here's the two fans that are included there they're NZXT black and white fans so I'm gonna go ahead and put this panel down as soon as the cameraman's done staring at that fan and then uh, we'll have a look at the inside so this is a very roomy interior all right we've got a uh, an accessory box here We've got our seven three and a half inch uh, drive mount here. So why don't we have a look at how this system works? Uh, this is, oh, you know what? I like this system. This is, uses a rubber grommet. So here, I'll hold this in the sun so you can see it. So you basically just push the little metal pieces out, push them all out. You slip in your hard drive, you push them back in, and it seems flexible now, but once you get a hard drive in there, it's actually much, much sturdier. It's, you've also got the holes here for a two and a half inch drive. 
So then all you do is slide that in there and boom, your hard drive's installed. Very, very, very simple. Okay, in terms of the five and a quarter inches, you unlock them here and then, oh, that's kind of neat. Check that out. Okay, come, come, come look at this. This is cool. Okay, so you just slide the lock and then it's actually like a little flexible piece of plastic and that's what, uh, that's what drives the spikes into the side of the drive. Can you see those spikes? So you just bend it up and then bend it back down and then lock it and then it doesn't go anymore. That's <laughs> pretty cool. I've never seen one quite like that before. All right. Let me just take out this uh, twist tie here that was holding in our accessory box. And let's have a look at what else we've got here. So you've got room for quite a long power supply, although not entirely unlimited in terms of length. And you can mount your power supply one of two ways. They have a, uh, uh, here, there's a filter at the bottom here. So you can have either a filtered intake at the bottom, or you can flip your power supply around the other way and have it uh, take in case air, although I definitely recommend this because they've got these rubber mounts here that'll keep your power supply elevated off the bottom of the case. And with the filtered intake, that's definitely gonna be your best option. It supports up to EATX motherboards. So that means you can go all the way over to here with a very, very large, potentially dual socket motherboard if you felt like it. You've got a CPU cutout that's gonna support most motherboard CPU locations. So that means that you can take off uh, large tower heat sinks or water blocks and put them back on without taking the motherboard out of the case. Here's our 120 mil fan. Let's have a look into the top of the case here. All right, so there's our 200 mil cooling fan and there's our spot for another one. This one is filtered and this one does not appear to be filtered. Although I couldn't tell you why at this time. Oh, it's possible that it's because the way this is set up is uh, for negative airflow right now. So that's why the uh, open intakes are actually filtered. That would be my, that would be my educated guess. Okay. And let's see what else that we want to uh, take a look at here. Now, 140 millimeter intake comes in here. Uh, let me just have a quick look at where those, so these 200, or these 120 millimeter fans here are blowing all over your drives. And they're also bringing air into the front where it can then be drawn across the video cards. And hopefully you have rear exhaust video cards. I really think that would be optimal for a case like this. Let me see what else we should do. Why don't we have a look at the included accessories? So pull out my Tech Tips knife that I now actually carry almost at all times. I cut myself with it the other day. Check this out. I tried to close it. I was like closing it like I don't know how I did it, but I managed to close it like right onto my, right onto my nail. It didn't hurt that much, but uh, well, there you go. Knives are dangerous. Be very careful with them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, hmm, what do we have? So here is a little metal bracket, two metal brackets. Okay. This is uh, screws, long screws. Okay. Here's some cable ties as well as a uh, PC speaker because there's no integrated speaker into the case. So you just plug a little speaker thing into the top of your motherboard. And here is all the screws that we will potentially need to assemble our system. All black screws, I love it. Those little touches, that is what really sets apart a premium case from a, a, a Me Too case. So those are your 632 screws. So those are your hard drive screws. All right, here's your motherboard standoffs. Here's your 632 screws flat. So those ones are probably for installing something, presumably motherboard, although there's not enough of them. There's only eight. Okay, so I don't actually know what those are for. Then we have 632 uh, longer ones. Okay. I'm sure there is an instruction manual. Well, there is an instruction manual. And I'm sure it tells us uh, what to do all, with all these. A bunch of thumb screws. So there's a little baggie of thumb screws. Cool. And then uh, here we have some fan screws. Here we have some uh, 632 hex screws. So those I'm presuming are for the power supply. And then we have some M3 screws. So those would be used for optical drives if we uh, wanted to double secure the optical drive. So you can see you can use the little flexi mount thing here. And then there's also two screw holes right in the front, which the cameraman cannot see from that angle, but he'll try. And cameraman wants me to look at the back of the case for some reason. Anyway, that's where those screws go. And, uh, oh right, we haven't looked at the back of the case yet. That's why the cameraman's uh, pointing over there. So here's all of the included cables. This is getting to be quite a long video, but hopefully you can uh, bear with me here. Here's power for your fan controller. This uses nice beefy uh, wires because you are providing up to 20 watts per channel. Or maybe it's 20 watts total. Either way, it can provide power to some pretty decent fans, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Hard drive LED, so there's all your front connectors. Nice black cable, happy to see that. 
got a eSATA front connector right there. And then what else do we have here? We've got uh, HD audio, there's a USB header, and these are nicely sleeved black. And then we've got a couple of, uh, oh right, these are for uh, the three aspects of the fan controller that are not located up here. So the ones that are not already plugged in. So you can see we've got uh, two more up here. So there's your five. Five leads off the integrated fan controller just like that. Okay, well I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about. Get one more dramatic shot of the front here because I really think that is what stands out about this case more than anything else is the look of it from the front and kind of seeing the top as well. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the NZXT Phantom. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. I can already tell you these are going to sell like hotcakes.